So if you've clicked on this video, chances are you have exhausted all content to watch on YouTube, on Netflix, and you're looking for something fresh given that lockdown has been extended. So if you've clicked on this video, you're in the right place. Hey guys, it's Legion. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be going over five cool car shows that you can watch during lockdown. Okay, so for this list, I have made it as inclusive as possible, including for our younger viewers. In fact, I would say the first two entries on this list is really more for kids. For all you dads out there who are trying to share your passion for automotive poison with your kids and start them young, the first two entries on this list might be of some help. Now, the fifth entry we have on this list is Speed Racer. Okay, so picture this. The year is 2002. The Fast and the Furious has only been out in cinemas for a year. Everyone's buying a PlayStation 2 and there are only three channels that you'll ever be interested in on Astro. Nickelodeon, Disney Channel and Cartoon Network. And of all three of those channels, only one was offering anything remotely automotive oriented. In summary, that was 8 year old me. Speed Racer was actually broadcasted on Cartoon Network at one point in time. In fact, it was the 1967 version of the show. Now I have to admit, the art style of this show has not aged well. But when you're 8 years old, you don't really have any standards. So if your kid hasn't been exposed to all the really high quality stuff of today, this show just might be worth introducing to them. Now if you don't know already, Speed Racer is about this guy, Speed. Yeah, that's his, that's actually his name who owns this car called the Mark V, which was built by his dad who owns a racing team. And aside from doing competitive racing with the Mark V, Speed goes on all these ridiculous adventures. And the car is equipped with what they call seven safety functions, both with offensive and defensive properties. It's the perfect way to bond with your kid and introduce him or her to cars as a subject. Now coming back to the art style, it is very old, so they may lose interest quite quickly. With that being said, in 1997, there was a reboot of this show in a more anime art style, which is still very reminiscent of how animes are made today. Of course, given that it's from 1997, the resolution is a little bit lower, but it still looks pretty good. If your kid likes Naruto, chances are he or she might like this, so it's worth a shot. Okay. The fourth entry on this list is another personal childhood favourite. And this is one that you might be able to reminisce with a bit better than Speed Racer. I am talking about Hot Wheels Accelerators. Do you remember being a kid, being able to play with all these little Hot Wheels rolling them around on the floor? But the biggest struggle with these cars is that you were never able to actually visualise what they would look like in motion. Well, actually... The car I'm holding up is a 67 Stingray Corvette, so you probably could see this in motion. Look, the point I'm trying to make is that when you're small and you can't drive, you can't actually see a lot of these cars in motion, let alone the Hot Wheels one, especially because they're fictional. Being able to see these cars actually come to life in this show was amazing. The production quality of the show wasn't actually that great. You could tell that there were some serious budget restraints when they produced this, but the result was really attention grabbing as an 11 year old kid at the time was when I discovered this show. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. I'm gonna let you find that out yourself. But all I'm gonna say is there is a sense of continuity because there are four movies in this one series. All the characters have some degree of background to them, so it does give each character some degree of attachment to the audience. And if you pay enough attention to the cast in the show, you do actually notice the consistency in the design language of each car, reminiscent of many of the supercars that we find off today. Okay, maybe that's just my 11-year-old me speaking. Okay, look, tell you what, go watch the movie with your kid and then disagree with me, okay? Okay, so if you're a Formula One fan and your ideal cinematic experience is watching a 70s Formula One rivalry portrait on screen, then this movie is for you. Coming in at number three, we have Rush. Rush is centered around what many would regard as the golden age of Formula One, more specifically with the rivalry of Niki Lauda and James Hunt. The movie explores both these characters in terms of their philosophy on life and how that translates both on track 
and off track. Nicky Lauda being the sort of guy who's sort of very uptight and kind of arrogant and a bit of a dick to everybody around him. I have the track record here. I'm the only person in history to do the ring in under seven minutes. So actually, it's to my advantage to race it today because I'm quicker than all of you. <laughs> and James Hunt, who is... Fine. Then let's race. Yeah. yeah. Well now, James, they've changed the regulations concerning the air boxes and the wings, and yet you're still extremely fast. How do you do it? Big balls. <laughs> the movie is actually directed by Ron Howard, and he did an amazing job encapsulating all the key events of what made the rivalry between James Hunt and Nicky Lauda so great. In terms of the differences in their character and the way these two Formula One titans clash heads, it's actually really fun to watch. The cinematic sequences in this movie are amazing and the props and the cars that they use in the movie look super authentic which just makes Rush such an enjoyable film to watch. Coming in at number 2 on this list, we have yet again another Formula 1 movie. Okay, so to be honest, this one technically isn't a movie, it's actually more of a documentary. This documentary revolves around one of the most controversial figures in Formula 1 history, but he certainly was regarded as the absolute best by every existing Formula 1 driver. I am talking about the movie Senna. Now I have to be honest, I haven't actually watched Senna since like 2011, but until today, I still remember this film. Needless to say, Senna is about Ayrton Senna, who was a three-time Formula 1 world champion back in the, 19, the late 1980s to the early 1990s. In a sense, this film shares a lot in common with Rush because it explores who Ayrton Senna was as a character both on track when he wasn't being a monster of a racing driver behind the wheel because in Brazil, they do like to celebrate their sports heroes, even if they're not football players. The coolest thing that I remember about this film is that there was very little narration over it. So what that means is the production company actually just pieced together all these raw footages of Ayrton Senna's day and all the episodes that he was going through. And that was what told the story. There was very little voiceover or voice overlays, which just gave it a much more authentic experience to the viewer. I guess that's one similarity that it shares with Rush, but of course Rush is more exaggerated because it's a movie and Senna is a documentary. Okay, finally, top spot on the list coming in at number one. If you're tired of me mentioning cartoons and Formula One, I hope you like Le Mans. Because of all the movies on this list, this movie is the newest. This movie only came out two years ago. And again, it talks about one of the greatest rivalries in motorsport history. I am talking about the one and only Ford versus Ferrari. If you want to watch a movie about Batman and the Martian go racing, this is the movie for you. Ford versus Ferrari is fundamentally about Ford as a company going on this crusade in an attempt to beat Ferrari at Le Mans because after Enzo Ferrari agreed to sell the company to Ford last minute, he pulled out and that made Mr. Ford very upset. So as a result, he reached out to Mr. Carroll Shelby, played by Matt Damon, who in his era was a bit of a motorsport legend as well. Carroll Shelby reached out to Ken Miles, who was a bit of a mad racing driver as well in his day. And if you think that it doesn't get better watching Batman and the Martian play racing drivers, the best part about this movie is that Ferrari is the bad guy. Well guys, that is my top 5 car shows that you can watch during lockdown. I know it's not fun staying at home given that it's lockdown all over again, but you know, I hope that this list has actually helped you out a little bit. It's going to keep you occupied for a while and hopefully if you're a dad, it's going to turn your kid into a car enthusiast. But let me know what you guys think. If you guys have other suggestions of better shows to watch, tell me what your top 3 is because this is just my personal one which I'm sharing with you guys. It doesn't mean that these are the absolute best and you know, I'm totally open to suggestions. So if you're gonna if you if you can think of something that's better, drop it down in the comment section below. I'd be happy to actually watch these movies because even I'm stuck at home, right? So I think that just about wraps up today's video. My name is Lee Jung, this is Auto Flirt, and until next time, catch me if you can.